Tony. Welcome. So much, Hilda, and uh, praise the Lord, uh, uh, everyone. My name is Abed Nego, as you've heard, and uh, I'm very blessed and happy this morning to share the word of God. Uh, probably just a quick uh, introduction as I put up my slides. Um, I am an alumnus of uh, Moi University, uh, uh, the class of 2006. I, that's when I, I cleared my bachelor's, but still uh, also joined uh, around 2008 to pursue my master's in uh, nursing. So I'm an alumnus times two of uh, Moi University. I am uh, born again, Christ is Lord over my life, or of Christ is Lord of my life. And um, I am uh, currently serving uh, in All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi, as uh, a leader uh, among the young, uh, couples, as well as um, in the leadership uh, of the church, as uh, one of the elders of the pillars, uh, that is the leadership pillar of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi by the grace of God. I'm um, working also at Aga Khan University as a senior lecturer, uh, where I teach uh, midwifery. I'm currently the head of department. Um, uh, 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 department of Midwifery in the School of Nursing and Midwifery. And I'm glad to be associated with uh, Moi University. Uh, 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 I'm sure probably I might, I might have met a few of you uh, uh, last week. I'm also an external examiner in Moi University. And so I'm sure we shall be meeting, especially the nursing students, uh, we shall be meeting or probably we've met already uh, in, in one forum or the other. So having said that, uh, this uh, meeting spoke a lot of um, good and wonderful uh, memories about uh, 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 Moi University. In fact, uh, the days when we used to call it faculty and we knew, we more or less knew each other in one way or the other. It's time being here and I'll quickly go to the word. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're able to see my screen. Uh, probably, uh, Hilda, are you able to see my screen? Yes, you can see a screen. Thank you, thank you so much. So I'll go straight to the word and uh, thank you for, uh, I think we've already prayed. So when I was told about uh, this uh, topic uh, yesterday by my brother, Jonathan Fussi, I really uh, 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 um, decided to go through and just read a little bit about the issue of cost, uh, uh, or, or rather define uh, a few things like the cost and discipleship. Those were the two major things which I really wanted to look at. And this is in keeping with the theme of uh, uh, of, 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 of this week, which is Matthew 4.19. I will make you fishers of men. Now, um, looking at this uh, very quickly, the cost simply means the price or what one needs to pay uh, 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 in lieu of something, what, need, what one needs to exchange for one to be able to get uh, uh, something. And so if you're going to buy something that is valuable, uh, it is normally determined by how much you are paying for it. If you pay a higher price, then it means it is a more valuable item. If you pay a little price, then it means that it is less valuable. That quickly reminds me of uh, of, 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 uh, of 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 the issue of, uh, of 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 business or trade or 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 or, or, or uh, uh, economy. Now. When it comes to the issue of discipleship, what is discipleship? Discipleship is simply the process of, of making someone to be like Christ, to disciple somebody. And when I was looking at these, uh, a few, a few uh, theological uh, uh, items, I was able to see that disciples were not just uh, uh, in the Bible. In those olden days, any scholar any person who was really uh, 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 
knowledgeable, had a few people who would believe in what they were teaching. But in this context, we are looking at Jesus trying to choose the 12 among the many to be able to help him to uh, advance the kingdom of God. So the primary purpose for Jesus coming to this world was actually to establish the kingdom of God. And through his death, uh, he desired that man will be a partaker in the kingdom. And so being a partaker simply meant that he would use men to be able to uh, uh, advance the teachings and his doctrine to mankind. And so he went ahead and we see uh, 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 him going about picking and choosing people whom he felt would really be close to him, people whom he would teach, people whom he would uh, 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 mentor. And once he is gone, they were the ones who are supposed to take up from him and go ahead and, and, and continue with the word or rather with evangelism. And therefore, I would quickly just like to look and I would like us to read very quickly when I thought about this issue about cost of discipleship. Uh, what came to my mind was the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 25 to 33. I know that um, I know I, I know I know that uh, really the issue of, uh, of, 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 of the cost of discipleship, there, there are lots and lots of texts that talk about this, but I felt like, let me just pick this one and speak to it this morning as the Lord leads. And it reads, Luke chapter 14, 25 to 33, it reads that large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace in the same way. Those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my, 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 my disciples. And that is a very wonderful text that really uh, made me start thinking. And I thought about uh, 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 four lessons from this issue about the cost of discipleship or the cost of making disciples or the cost of being a disciple. For one to be a disciple, according to this text, there is need for us to be able to lay down our ego, to lay down our pride, to lay down our achievements and strengths, and to give up everything that is valuable, that we believe we have toiled and worked so hard for, and to surrender to God's will. And that is according to verse 25 and verse 32. I like this uh, a word about uh, 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 really uh, uh, laying down or rather surrendering or considering whatever we have achieved as nothing. From, the, from, from, from Paul, uh, Paul's uh, 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 a letter to the Philippians where he say, yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do not count them but damn that I may win Christ. Indeed, brethren, it is high time that we need to lay down our ego, to let God take over from us, not to value the achievements for the things of the world really account for nothing if we don't know Jesus. It is, it is, it is in vain to win the whole world and lose your own soul. It is really immaterial for us to fight for things that we will die and live here. 
And so it all calls for us being able to lay down our pride, for us being to forget about our achievements, for us to forget about our practice and the people whom we feel probably would separate us from the love of God and take up and, 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 and be able to do what number two lesson says, to take up our cross. Now, taking up the cross, I come from a community whereby uh, we have quite a number of uh, 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 religions and religious sects who, uh, who actually would find uh, on a particular day, especially the day of worship, they would be walking around and carrying crosses among others. And I, I'll not mention names. Sorry if you uh, uh, if, if 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 that would um, probably uh, I'll be stepping on your fingers by mentioning that, but. Uh, uh, the issue of taking up your cross is not a literal uh, cross, actually. It is uh, 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 it is supposed to be, it's a symbolic meaning uh, to, to it. So taking up your cross is is, is really, uh, the, the cross, uh, probably if I, if, if, if I say this, is the cross is a symbol of death. Jesus died on the cross. It was a shameful death. It was a a symbol that showed a lot of shame and a lot of death. And therefore, when you say that you take up your cross, what you simply mean is put to death or anything that is sinful, the thoughts that we have, the actions that we have, we need to put them to death if they do not glorify to God. In case anything would come up that we feel is not in the will of God and God has given us a conscience, all of us, men and women, children, and etc. God has given us a conscience that anything that we do that is not right, we need to put it aside. We need to, uh, uh, to we, need, we need to put it to death. So that is the issue about taking up our cross. And we should do things that are pleasing to God. In this, in the, in, 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 uh, 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 so you'll find that there's a lot of things that have become uh, so fashionable. There's a lot, we're living in a world where we have full, we are full of compromises, whereby we do not address sin as sin. We call it a weakness. We call, we call, we call uh, adultery, we, we, we will Christian it and call it a love affair, an affair, all right? These are times when we need to, to call out sin by its name. All right, so that we do not entertain any thoughts, we do not we do not uh, 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 become too liberal about these things uh, uh, to do with the kingdom of God. Anything that would lead us to sin, the word tells us that we need to remove it. If it is your eye, you better get to heaven without without one eye. Uh, if, if it is your hand, you better chop it off so that you really are able to 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 to, to please. A, a God in the way you are serving Him, and so it's important that we lay down our pride. We also, we lay down our pride. We lay down our ego and take up the cross, die to 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 to, to self, and let Christ live instead. And that is the cost of discipleship. Brethren, it is a very painful uh, 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 thing if you come to think about it uh, because of the things you are likely to lose. But greater is the reward that you'll get in heaven. And so it is time that as Christians, as believers, we need to be serious and take up the pride, take up this challenge and live to please our God. The third lesson is to follow Jesus daily to do his will daily. And therefore, in case we are doing this, his will daily, it means that we are living a life that is pleasing to him. We need not uh, uh, to, 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 to think about things that would make us uh, 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 happy, but things that would be in the will of God. We need to think about things that are likely to, uh, uh, to, be, to, be, to be selfish uh, uh, desires. We need to think about things that are, 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 are likely to separate us from him and do away with him. So we need to follow Christ and stick around uh, uh, or, or, or rather to, 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 to think about things that would really be pleasing in his eyes. And so this would entail us uh, even losing material things, losing uh, physical things, losing 
dreams and desires that do not glorify God. And if we have not thought about, the, uh, about it this way, whereby we are believers of the prosperity, and I, I have no problem with issues of prosperity, but when you think about Christ and following him, there are things which, of course, they are glorious, they are good, they are beautiful about the journey with Christ. But there are other things which, of course, you'll have to endure, you'll have to go through uh, a persecution, you'll have to go through afflictions. I'm just, I'm just reminded of, of, of the disciples of Christ who were given a choice to choose between their lives and Christ, and they decided even to die for the sake of the gospel, to die because of, of, of Christ. That indeed is a very, very, uh, is the highest price you can pay in this issue of discipleship. And so uh, uh, it is, it is, it is, it is a, a double fold, uh, the cost of discipleship in as much as you are, you are discipling other people to follow Christ. At the same time, you have to live as an example. So you need to be ready to lead a, a, a life that is really a, a, a life that is godly, a life that is pleasing to him for you to be able to, uh, to for you to be able to be in line or in sync with, 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 the, with the word or the will of God. And lastly, is the issue about counting the cost. Counting the cost is one great thing. And look at, uh, uh, at the, 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 the word of God when he says that, uh, in case someone wants to, uh, uh, and probably I'll just quickly go to that text um, and, and just read it and say, suppose one wants to build a tower, won't he first sit down and estimate the cost? Suppose one wants to go to war, uh, won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able to do this? And so the issue about the cost is really a great one, and we need to know that uh, 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 whenever we are following Christ, we need to think about uh, uh, things about uh, 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 the kingdom, which may not be so simple in, 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 in or, or they not, not just be direct the way uh, we, we, we want to live our lives. We need to strategically think. We need to involve God in our work with him. And so we need to make a consideration we need to reach a point whereby we make a conscious decision. We should not just live a life of being good. At times, uh, and I remember this uh, uh, before I gave my life to, I, I, I remember this preacher, that was in 1996 when I was uh, informed to, this preacher who came and was preaching to us and telling us about the issue of salvation. And he said, you might be, you might have been born in this family whereby you were going to church and your parents loved God and they served God and automatically you find yourself serving God. And so you are just a good church goer, but you have not consciously sat down to think through and deliberately give your life to Christ. Is there anyone among you who is actually uh, in this category? And I came and thought about it quite seriously. Yes, I had lived in a very good, uh, I, I, I had raised very well, and I thank God for my late parents. They did that. I was a church person, and I believed I was saved. But I had never reached a point whereby I sat down and thought through and deliberately gave my, uh, 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 given my life to Christ. And so when this preaching came, I became very deliberate. I thought through what he had said, and I consciously, in fact, that is the day when I now gave my life to Christ. Actually, I had thought all through that I was saved uh, because I was doing the good things, because I was, I was, I was serving in church very diligently, uh, uh, because I was singing in choir, but I had never thought about it. Counting the cost simply means uh, 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 that we need to consider we need to sit down and think through what we need to do uh, for us to be able to, to uh, and, and make deliberate decisions. Make deliberate decisions about, first of all, trusting in God. 
We should not take it like, uh, 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 and, and, and the other issue about counting the cost, I would like to talk about is the issue of grace, whereby we believe that uh, we are saved by grace. There is a price to it. Grace is good. Grace is wonderful. Uh, uh, but uh, there is need. We need to reach a point whereby we do, we need, we need, we need, we need to, 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 to deliberately lay down our, 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 our lives and, 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 and let Christ live in us. It, the message of the grace is wonderful. And at times it has sounded just as if uh, it's, it's, it's the issue or, uh, uh, of, 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 um, of, of, of Christ living in us and enabling us to do. And so that we are so, as a church, we are so free to, 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 to just believe that it's just the grace of God that has saved us. And so there's nothing that we cannot do about it. But the counting the cost simply means agreeing to some terms. There are terms which Christ has set up. We cannot follow him up. We cannot follow him and not do anything. I know, again, this can become a very big debate about faith and works. But indeed, it is important as Christians to be deliberate. It's important as Christians to be uh, purposeful. It's important as Christians to be decisive and know that, yes, we are saved by the grace of God. but we also need to live lives that are pleasing to him. Uh, we need to reach a point whereby we are deliberate in the thoughts that we entertain. We don't just go ahead and sin and believe that we shall be forgiven and we continue living in a life full of sin and just hoping that one day uh, 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 we will enter heaven. It won't be true. It won't happen. Discipleship means going out, it means being deliberate, it means uh, 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 really uh, uh, walking a, 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 a life that is, uh, the life that is pleasing in his eyes. And so I would like to finish this by uh, 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 looking at uh, 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 someone who also had talked about the issue of the cost of discipleship. This is a German theologian and author by the name Dietrich Benhofer. Sorry if I may not pronounce it uh, very well. And in his works, he is uh, what is quoted so much about, about uh, this author or this particular author is the issue about uh, grace. And he was mentioning, uh, 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 he, he talked about um, the issue about cheap and costly grace. And according to this author, cheap grace is preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. You know, we have reached as a church uh, or as the body of Christ, whereby we want to preach forgiveness without thinking about the act of us purposing and deciding to talk to God and deliberately turning away from our evil ways. We talk of repentance without talking, so we talk about forgiveness, whereby God is doing his part without us doing our part of repenting. We talk about baptism without thinking about church discipline. In his, in his writing, he talks about communion without confession. And you find that when we talk about these things, uh, this, this, this is a point whereby as a church, we reach a point whereby we are so, so uh, uh, laid back. We don't want to preach the hard gospel. We want to tolerate a few things. We want to tolerate uh, uh, issues of homosexuality in church and talk about, and talk about uh, uh, the love of Christ. When, by, when the Bible straight, uh, 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 really in black and white, points out some of these things as sin, all right? And so that is an abuse of grace. And he calls it cheap grace. But in contrast, he talks about uh, costly grace. And costly grace is really grace that confronts, grace that would help us to be able to look for a way of being broken and having a contrite heart. That reminds me of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of the psalmist, uh, King David, when he had committed sin with Bathsheba. And he said that uh, a God created me a clean heart and do not take away the Holy Spirit from me. 
uh, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. And so he was a broken man. And that is the cost of grace, not just a matter of us believing that God will do and we are saved by grace. No, but deliberately going out to make sure that we are doing something about this faith. And as I finish, I would like to ask, is Christ a master of your life? Have you put to death your own plans? Have you put to death your ego? Have you put to death uh, 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 things that you feel that might stand in your way uh, 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 between you and Christ? Have you laid down your ego? Have you taken up your cross? Are you putting to death the things that are likely to cause you not to enter heaven? Are you following Jesus Christ? And have you sat down to count the cost? And so I share this in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this word to us. And Lord God, thank you for using me as a vessel to speak this word to your people. God, you've reminded us in your word that it is important for us to reach a point of decision, a point of counting the cross, a point of not just uh, being laid back Christians, but indeed who would be ready to lay down our lives, who will be able, God, to sacrifice be able to turn away from our, our wickedness and people who would be able to combine faith and works. And so King of Glory, I'm praying for my colleagues. I'm praying for uh, the alumni and the Moore University fraternity and the church in Kenya at large that you may help us, God, to be able to be bold enough in these changing times to be able to confront sin and call it as it is and be able, Lord, even to uh, 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 preach the uh, the gospel of, of 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 righteousness, the gospel of holiness, and not to uh, sugarcoat uh, things that are ills in the society. And so, King of Glory, I pray that you may indeed bless us this morning and bless each and every person uh, listening to this voice. That Father Lord, may your will come to pass in our lives. We pray that, Father Lord, you will keep us in your will. We continue, Lord, blessing us and blessing the works of our hands. And in everything that we do, Lord, may we be please, may, may we please you, King of Glory. May we not uh, be people that would uh, indeed from our actions be a disgrace to your kingdom. So, Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name for this. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Uh, I now return it back to continue from 